Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to take a look at the newly released PSA Jekyll 10 and 308. First, we'll take a quick look through the bore scope. Next, we'll go over the shooting setup and equipment. After that, we'll hit the range to test the rifle and address a major issue I found during testing. All right, we'll start out with a quick look through the bore scope. The barrel is nitride treated and has a black surface color. Anyway, here we are at the throat. Nothing looks too bad here and a slight unevenness to the throat. And here is the rifling a little bit further up the barrel and nothing looks out of place here. Again, it's kind of hard to see the details with uh, the black coloring. And here is the gas port which looks to be a nice clean hole with no burrs and the gas port on this particular barrel is between the rifling for those of you who care about that sort of thing and here we are at the crown it looks like there might be the slightest bit of a blemish on there on the outside of the chamfer since it's on the outside I don't think it'll affect things much but we'll see here in a minute anyway the rest of the crown looks pretty nice and consistent all right with that out of the way let's go over the shooting setup I'll be shooting 30 shot groups this will give us a decent sample size and will also let us see how this rifle performs with a bit of heat in it like you might find in a match or other practical scenario Each each group will take about five minutes to shoot and will be edited down to about 20 seconds. The barrel will be cooled with a chamber chiller and leaf blower between the groups to allow for an even comparison between the ammunition types. The adjustable gas block was set to setting seven, which is one click less than wide open. The rifle will be supported with a front rest and rear bag. A front bag rider has been attached to the handguard to better fit the front rest. A few rounds were fired prior to shooting the first group to foul the bore and zero the scope. The point of aim is a small circle at the bottom of the target. The scope is zeroed a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. The scope is a Vortex Viper, six and a half to 20 by 44. Scope ring torque was confirmed at 15 inch pounds and scope mount torque was confirmed at 60 inch pounds. Magnification is set at 20 and parallax was set and confirmed with a head nod test. All groups will be fired at 100 yards. Wind will be monitored with a ribbon. A chronograph will capture the velocity of each shot. A Mantis X10 is mounted to the front of the handguard. This is an accelerometer that will grade each shot based on how steady the rifle was at the moment of firing. And the groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. For this rifle, I shot four 30 shot groups. The first group was with 147 grain PMC bronze FMJ. The second group was AAC 168 grain Sierra Match Kings. And third was AAC 175 grain Sierra Match Kings. And last was PMC x -Tac Match 168 grain OTMs. All right, let's do it. Okay, so before we get to the shooting part, I have to touch on something that I noticed during editing. For three of the groups that I shot, based on the camera angle, it kind of looks like the foreign stop on the front rest could have been contacting the barrel, which would have been concerning for an accuracy test but nothing is touching the barrel. It just looks that way due to where the camera's placed. I should have moved the foreign stop before shooting the groups, but I didn't. So, since I know you guys are a skeptical bunch, I went back to the range on another day to shoot a fourth 30 shot group and made sure that there was nothing close to the barrel. This should quell any concerns and also give us a little bit more data to look at. But if you do see the barrel touching the foreign stop or anything else during the shooting, you can comment below with the timestamp and shot number and let everyone else know what you saw. Okay, let's get back to it. All right, so starting off with the PMC bronze. This isn't an ammo that I usually expect to group well, but but I usually like to see how it goes since it's usually on the less expensive side of things and a pretty commonly used training load. I've also found that most PMC bronze loads to be a bit underpowered, so it's nice to see if this rifle is able to get through it without any malfunctions. As far as the shooting goes, all these shots felt pretty good on my end. The wind was blowing just a little bit during this group. Ejection looked nice and consistent with no malfunctions. Recoil it felt about how I expected it to. And yeah, we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Okay, so starting things off with a bang here. Uh, just for a quick reference for those of you who are wondering, here is the best 30 shot group that I've shot to date on the channel. It was with the Sons of Liberty SPR barrel. It had a mean radius of 0 0.299 MOA. So of course you're welcome to make any conclusions about my shooting skills or not, but I thought I'd just throw that out there. Uh, anyway, getting back to the Jackal with the uh, PMC Bronze group. We had an average velocity of 2400 feet per second with an SD of 16 and an ES of 65. And we had a group size of 7.955 MOA with a mean radius of 1.843 MOA. And the average rifle stability score was 99.5, which is about my average. So the velocity looks pretty good. The group does not look so good. And uh, yeah, shooting about what I usually shoot at. If we take a closer look at the group, everything looks fairly well distributed, except with shot number 16 up here. And if we look a little closer at shot 16, the velocity was just below average. And the rifle stability score was 99.3, which is just below average. And then that shot felt fine when I broke it um, during the group. So I'm confident in saying that this wasn't me. But for those of you who are wondering, if you exclude shot number 16, the group size goes down to 5.991 MOA with a mean radius of 1.753 MOA. But since I don't have a good reason to exclude shot number 16, we're going to leave it in. So I'll take a quick look at the, my worst shots according to the Mantis real quick. So the worst shot was shot number 20 down here, and then also shot number 4 up here. Uh, so both of those shots didn't feel bad when I broke them, but the Mantis uh, score was a little bit lower than what I'd like to see. And we'll take a quick look at the velocity to highs and lows. So the lowest velocity shot was shot number 30, which is right here. And the highest velocity shot was shot number 1, which is right here. So if you break things down into 5-shot groups, the best 5-shot group was 3.1 MOA, with an average 5-shot group size of 4.2 MOA. 
And if we break things down into 10 shot groups, we had two four MOA 10 shot groups with an average 10 shot group size of 5.3 MOA. And with that, we'll head to the next group. I'm just gonna jump in here real quick and mention that I started an Instagram page. So if you wanna follow me there, you can find a link in the description. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, moving on to the AAC 168 grain Sierra Match Kings. I would consider this ammo to be on the mid to higher end of the scale. Sierra Match Kings are usually considered pretty good by most shooters I talk to. I did have one shot on this group that I didn't feel super confident about. The reticle settled just a little bit off center. So we'll go over that when we take a closer look at the group. Wind was pretty minimal with this group. Ejection looked pretty consistent. The chronograph recorded all the shots. And the Mantis was also able to get all the shots. And no malfunctions with this ammo. So we will finish up and then take a closer look. Okay, so here is a group with the AAC 168 grain SMKs. We had an average velocity of 2375 with a really good SD of 8 and extreme spread of 31. The group size was 3.358 MOA with a mean radius of 0.700 MOA. And the average rifle spill score is 99.5. And it looks like a pretty respectable group with these three obvious little outliers here. Uh, on my end, shot number 14 didn't feel great, but it ended up uh, pretty close to the center. And then shot number 28, uh, the reticle did drift a little bit high, but it wasn't two inches high. So I'm not going to take full responsibility for this one. Uh, and those, for those of you who are wondering, if we exclude the three uh, outliers here, we end up with a pretty respectable group of 2.139 MOA with a mean radius of 0.576 MOA, which is a pretty good looking group. But that's uh, that's not what I do here. So the worst shot, according to the Mantis, was shot number 14, which uh, didn't feel great on my end, and that, but it ended up pretty close to the center. Uh, and next we'll take a look at the 5 and 10-shot uh, group breakdowns. If we break things down into 5-shot groups, we had a 5-shot uh, group best of 0 0.9 MOA with an average 5-shot group size of 1.6 MOA, which is pretty good. And then if we break things down into 10-shot groups, we had a best 10-shot group size of 1.5 MOA with an average 10-shot group size of 2.3 MOA. So, I mean, this doesn't look too bad. I guess you can see what, what, whatever you want to see here. Uh, anyway, we are going to head to the next group. All right, so on to another AAC match load with CR Match King Bullets. All the shooting felt fine on my end, with no significant errors caused by me. I did have one malfunction with this load after the mag change. It was a short stroke on shot 21, I think. You'll see that the ejection was pretty weak, and the bolt was not able to get behind the round in the magazine, and ended up riding on top of it, mangling it a bit. So, I swapped out the mangled round for a new one, and continued the shooting. Again, the gas was on setting 7 of 8. The wind was pretty calm for this group, recoil felt fine, the ejection looked consistent other than the short stroke on shot number 21. So, we will finish up here, and then take a closer look. Okay, so before diving into this group, we're going to talk about that malfunction for a minute. After I got back from the range and took a closer look at the rifle, I noticed that there seemed to be a lot of brass shavings in and around the chamber. Some brass shavings isn't completely abnormal. Sometimes the barrel extension will scrape the brass a bit, but this seemed like a lot. So I went and looked at the spent brass cases and noticed that quite a few of them look scarred up and rough, which led me to take a closer look at the chamber with the bore scope. And again, due to the black nitride treatment, it is a little hard to see all the details. And yes, the chamber still is a little bit dirty, but I think you can see what's going on here. The chamber looks a bit rough. Here is the chamber from an AR-15 barrel that I have to compare it to. And there is a pretty big difference in smoothness here. It's hard to tell how deep these grooves are in the images, but I cleaned the chamber a bit and took the back end of a wooden Q-tip and ran it up and down the chamber walls, and I could clearly feel the roughness in the chamber. So, based on the malfunction, the brass shavings, the scarred brass, the bore scope, and feeling chamber walls, I'm pretty confident in saying that there is a problem with this chamber. Obviously, not every jackal will have this issue, but mine does. I haven't contacted PSA about this yet. I will eventually, but for now, I'm just going to throw this thing in the back of the safe and deal with it later. All right, enough of the drama. Let's get back to the data. With the 175 grain SMKs from the AAC, we had an average velocity of 2322 with a pretty good SD of 18 and ES of 96. The average rifle stability score is 99.5. And we had a group size of 3.818 MOA with a mean radius of 0 0.899 MOA. And nothing looks really out of place here. We'll look at shot number one, which had a velocity above average and a rifle stability score 99.6. And the only thing on my end was shot number 28. Felt like it, I drove the reticle down a little bit as it broke the shot, but it ended up uh, pretty close to the center here. And then I did have a couple of shots below 99.0 uh, according to the Mantis. So that shots uh, 6, 28, 9, and 24. But uh, other than that, uh, that's the group. And things look pretty consistent. Uh, we had a couple of five shot group sizes in the 2.2 MOA range with an average five shot group size of 2.5 MOA. And if we break things down into 10 shot groups, we had the lowest 10 shot group of 2.4 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 2.9 MOA. Okay, so this group is a week later than the other groups. 
I decided to shoot another 168 grain load since it performed best last time and see if we can't eke out slightly better performance here. I adjusted the gas block from setting 7 to setting 8 which is wide open and there were no malfunctions with this group. The ejection looked nice and consistent. Shot number 14 felt a little bit off but we'll talk about that here in a minute. The Chrono and Mantis captured data from every shot. Wind was pretty calm and yeah everything went fine. We will finish up with the group and then take a closer look. Okay, here's a group with the PMC XTech Match 168 grain OTMs. We had an average velocity of 2334 with an SD of 19 and an ES of 74. Average rifle stability at 99.5. And we had a group size of 3.340 MOA with a mean radius of 0 0.779 MOA. And looks to be a pretty good group with the exception of shots number 20 and 21, which fell out outside of the main cluster here. Uh, both shots 20 and 21 felt fine when I broke them. And then the rifle stability score for both of those was 99.8, uh, which is really high. So we are going to leave those in. And here is the 5 and 10 shot group breakdown. The best 5 shot group was 1.1 uh, MOA with an average 5 shot group size of 1.8 MOA. And for the 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 2.2 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 2.5 MOA. And next up we'll head to the uh, overall results. Before we get to the overall results, I want to thank you for watching my content. And if you have enjoyed the video and found it useful, you would help me out a lot if you could support the channel with a $2 super thanks so that I can buy more ammo and equipment to bring you more content like this. Thanks again for watching. Let's get back to it. Okay, so here are the overall results for the Jackal 10. If you're new here, I have this thing called the AZ, which is the A-Zone Equivalence Distance, which is basically the max distance where the group would still fit inside a USPC A-Zone, which is 5.9 inches wide. To me, it's just an easier number to understand than the raw mean radius number. So to get the AZ, we take the mean radius of the 30-shot 100-yard group, so if we look at this group, that would be 0 0.700 MOA, and multiply that by 4 to get 2.80 MOA, and then calculate the distance where 2.8 MOA would equal 5.91 inches, and we get 202 yards. And if we look at the other 168 grain group, we see that the uh, it wasn't too far behind with an AZ score of 181, and the 175 grain load did a little bit worse at 157 yards, and the 147 grain PMC bronze just did really bad at uh, 77 yards. So of course, I'm not a perfect shooter, and all these scores could probably improve at least a little bit, and the rifle may shoot better with different ammo, but this was the best performance that I was able to get out of the rifle. Uh, next up, we will take a look at the leaderboard and see how the Jackal 10 stacks up against the other groups that have shot. All right, so the Jackal 10 is a bit of an oddball on this. It's the only complete rifle on here. The rest are barrels that I installed into the upper myself, and the Jackal is also the only 308 on this list, but it will still give us a general idea of how it stacks up. Anyway, the Jackal came in seventh place out of nine, and honestly, it did a little bit better than I thought it was going to. That's not to say that it did good, but a long stroke gas piston 308 doesn't strike me as being the most precise rifle out there. And here you can see the Jackal's best group compared to the group from the Sons of Liberty SPR barrel, which is currently at the top of the leaderboard. So the Jackal's AZ of 202 versus the Sons SPR barrel with well over twice as far at 472 yards. So quite a difference there. Anyway, let's talk about the 308 versus the 223 for a minute. Okay, so I stumbled upon a mobile app from Applied Ballistics that looks pretty neat, and it has a tool that can be very helpful for comparing different cartridges. Well, uh, let me back up here for a second. I have no affiliation with Applied Ballistics, and I am positive that they have no idea who I am. I just recently found the app and thought it was really helpful. Anyway, the app has a tool called the WES, or Weapon Employment Zone, and it is basically a very sophisticated hit probability calculator. So, with that, I think it should provide us with a pretty easy way to compare different cartridges in terms of hit probability. For instance, comparing a 7.62 DMR to a 5.56 SPR. Which one has a higher first round hit probability at distance? So, for this example, we're going to use the Jackal 10 that you guys just saw, and the Air 15 from my last video with the Sons of Liberty Gunworks SPR barrel. Starting with the baseline performance, the Sons of Liberty SPR barrel shot a much tighter group at 100 yards compared to the Jackal 10. However, the Jackal 10 had a really good velocity SD with a larger 100 yard group. So, with those things in mind, which of these two rifles would you expect to have a greater hit probability at 800 yards? Okay, before we get to the answer, here's a look at the inputs. You can mainly pay attention to the rifle precision and the velocity standard deviation. So, at this range, with this target, and with these loads, they are about even, which I think is pretty neat. So, with the 5.56 rifle, the higher velocity SD is going to cause your group size to increase vertically once you start to shoot out to farther distances say about 500 yards or so. And compared to the Jackal 10, the baseline group size isn't that good, but since it had a pretty solid velocity SD, it won't experience as much vertical stringing at distance as the 5.56 gun did. And we end up with this. Obviously, for the highest hit probability, you'd want to combine the best rifle precision 
with the most consistent ammunition velocity. But I thought that these two rifles with these two loads made for a good comparison. So let me know what you guys think of this stuff, comparing different cartridges to one another. I like to do some other comparisons like 5.56 versus 6 arc versus 6 Mac would be pretty neat. Or the suppressed specialty rounds like 300 blackout, 86 blackout, and the new 338 arc. I think those and a lot of other comparisons would be really enlightening. So let me know if you guys be interested in content like that or if I should just stick to 5.56 uh, stuff. And in full disclosure, I only own 5.56 stuff and now the 308 Jackal. So getting other cartridges will likely take a little bit of time or I'm going to need a little bit of help uh, putting materials together. But anyway, the first step is seeing if you guys are interested and I can figure out the rest, I guess. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to see some more cartridge comparisons. And that'll do it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Later.